Hi, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce consultant with Rotiv. We're an official Salesforce partner, and we help small businesses automate their processes. If you like this video, take a look at some of the courses we've created at academy.rotiv.io. I think you'll find those valuable too. In this video, I'm going to talk about formula fields. We're going to go through what formula fields are, why I think they're great, and also some of the common use cases for them. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go through some common pitfalls people run into when they first start using formula fields. So first off, what are formula fields? Well, you can add a formula field to any object like any other field, but there's some really important differences. First off, when you see the output of a formula field, you need to know that that data isn't actually stored in the database. What's stored in a formula field are the instructions. It's the formula, not the output that's actually stored in that field. And formula fields consist of two different things. One would be an input and the other are actions on that input. So an input might be another field on the record. So for example, you could reference the amount field or the created date or the name of the person who owns a record within a formula. You can also just add any value that you like. So you could write in a number, for example, and use that in a formula. Now, the other thing that consists of formula fields are actions. And so actions are doing something to that data. This might be an operator like addition or, or subtraction. You can add or subtract two formulas together. It could also be a function. And a function is essentially a preset action for some data. So this might be taking a text value as an example and making it all capitals. And there's all the other functions that are gonna come in really handy. Like there's a function that pulls in today's date automatically and then lets you use that within your formula. When you first create your formula, you have the option to set what type of output you should get from that formula. So this might be a currency value or a number or a percentage text. It could even be a checkbox, checked or unchecked. So to summarize, a formula field is really a set of instructions that you have working on data, whether that's referenced within Salesforce or it's something that you write directly into that formula field. And you can control what that output looks like, whether it's a number or percentage or a text value. All right, so let's go through some use cases. So one common use case might be to calculate margin. If you have an amount field for a sales price and you have the amount field for cost of goods, you can use a formula field to subtract cost of goods from your sales price, and that's gonna give you your margin. It's the same principle if you're trying to calculate amount outstanding. You've got a field that has the total amount that's due and a field that shows you how much has already been paid. Subtract one from the other and we know how much you're still owed. So you can use similar operations on dates or date time fields too, in order to calculate how many days it's been since a certain date or how many days there were between two dates. So a use case for this might be to understand how many days did it take for us to have a demonstration with a customer since we created an opportunity. You simply have a date field for that demonstration or that meeting with the, with the customer or the prospect. And then you subtract from it the date that the opportunity was created. So maybe it took us seven days, maybe it took us 14 or, or even longer. And now you can start to see, you know, how long is it taking for certain milestones to happen within a process, whether that's an opportunity or a on account record or within cases. And this is really valuable for companies that are concerned with the velocity of their operations, or if they want to make sure they're tracking turnaround time on different processes. And finally, you can use a formula field as an indicator of a status on a record. So you can have text be the output of your formula. And within that text, you could write, well, any sort of message you'd like, but you can also include emojis like a red flag or an angry face or something like that. And in the formula, you can put in custom logic to take a look at maybe particular fields on that record or dates that are upcoming. So as you get closer to a date, you can see if the stage is appropriate, or you can see if you've got fields that are missing data, and then you can output a red flag or an angry face or, you know, text that says, pay attention to me, hopefully getting your attention. So you don't miss something important as that date starts to come up. And so this comes in handy for companies that submit a lot of RFPs. Well, requests for proposals always have a due date. So as that due date is coming up, if that proposal or that opportunity is not in the submitted stage, you can change the output of the formula field to get attention of the team to make sure you're not missing a deadline accidentally. 
Those are just a few use cases for formula fields. There are many, many more, but hopefully that should get the wheels turning and help you generate some ideas. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other favorite use cases for formula fields or other ideas we should discuss. So now let's talk about the common pitfalls when it comes to formula fields. So the first one is keep in mind formula field changes do not trigger anything. This is a common misconception because when you're looking at the output of a formula field, you might see that value change over time. For example, it might be how many days until the deadline, right? Well, each day that formula field output is going to be different. But remember, the formula field itself is just instructions, and the instructions haven't changed at all from day to day. So a change in the output of a formula field is not going to trigger a record-triggered flow or cause an integration to get updated. The value of that formula field hasn't actually changed in these cases. You can use formulas now as a condition for a record-triggered flow, but if it changes, that's not necessarily going to trigger that flow. So here's another common issue with formula fields. If you change the formula, it's going to change the output for any place that formula shows up. So let's say somebody uses a formula field to calculate a commission. And you've been doing this for a couple of years. Well, maybe your commission structure changes and maybe it goes up or it goes down, but however it changes, if you now make that update in the formula field, it's not only going to apply to all opportunities moving forward, it'll apply to all historical opportunities too. And that could really damage your reporting. You would then be overstating or understating how much of a commission there was on past opportunities just in order to update your commission structure moving forward. So a better approach when it comes to commissions or any sort of formula that might change over time is probably to use a flow to do that calculation and then stamp that value into a currency field or a percentage field or something like that rather than using a formula field because it might change. And finally, a common issue is with pick lists and multi-select pick lists. So whenever you're working with pick list values in formulas, you're probably going to need to turn that pick list value into a text value first. Then you can compare it to other text values and make other sort of logical conditions based on that. And then when it comes to multi-select pick lists, same sort of thing. We need to convert that value into text, and then you can start working with it. And if it is a multi-select pick list value, it's going to be semicolon separated text values within that multi-select pick list. So you probably need to use a contains function in order to understand if a particular value was selected within that multi-select pick list. So recap on pick lists. Use that text function to convert pick list values to text, and then you can start comparing them in logical operations. And when it comes to multi-select pick lists, just do your best to avoid them generally. And if you can't, you'll need to convert it to text and then use a contains function to understand if that value you were interested in was actually contained in that multi-select pick list. Well, I hope you found that introduction to formula field helpful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. It helps our channel out a lot. And let us know what other sorts of videos you'd like to see or what other sorts of Salesforce and automation questions you have. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.